Hello, my friends. Welcome to BFR Tuesday. And um, my name is Ed LaCara. I am the one that's been hosting this for, gosh, it's been over two years now. Every Tuesday, 1 p.m. Central Time, I talk about something BFR related. Hope everybody is uh, staying healthy and well during this crazy, crazy time. I always like to start these off before I talk about what I want to talk about to see if there's any questions regarding, um, I don't know, anything, BFR, um, yeah, primarily BFR. So you can always just type your message in to the uh, chat, which should be in your upper right corner. So I'm going to say hello. Say where you're from. And any info you'd like me to cover in future weeks? I've been like mad working on um, our performance course that should be coming up. <laughs> Minette, I know it's almost there. I just contacted um, where we're going to shoot the video. And um, Next step is for me to contact my videographer and then we will have this thing out. So what I'm thinking, before I even do all that, I might just do a, a level two course um, over the course of a few days because talking for long periods of time, like for four, five, six hours, I don't think is as effective. I took a, uh, a really, really good course, Oxygen Advantage, um, with Patrick McEwen and he was, he did it two hours a day for like seven sessions. And I thought it was a really, really cool way, um, a really cool way to do it because it wasn't so much of my whole day. Um, and then I got to absorb a lot of that information and then I could ask questions on the next one. And so I might do that. I might, hmm. Yeah, I might do that. Lynn, virtual, Level one, um, I have to edit the video. I am doing another one, um, I believe. Let me take a look. Let's take a look at that. I'm gonna share my screen. We're gonna go take a look. Um, why don't we just, I'll just share my entire screen. Let's do this. Let's go to smart tools. Uh, let's see. Um, so right now it looks like we have um, June opened up. Now I think we have a web online academy. Let's see what this looks like. <clears throat> I thought we had an online course going. Let me. I thought we had an online class going next week. I'll have to check on that. But if not, maybe I should just do a level one. Uh, maybe I should just do a level one course. Let's see if people would like to do that. Um, so Lynn, let me get back to you. I, I need to edit some of the video. Um, and clean it up. Just been a little slammed with all this uh, COVID stuff going on. So give me, I would say within six weeks, I should have that done and I should have this BFR level two all complete. Uh, James took your smart tools class in Georgia. Yeah, Georgia. Love Georgia. I'm going to move to Georgia someday. I really like Georgia. Um, having a reaction to his stitches. So he has a couple of spots not healed completely post op UCL. My MD does not want me to use BFR until the wounds are healed. Uh, um, well, I mean, I would do whatever the surgeon really wanted. I mean, let's be honest. Um, technically, they're really his patient. So I would wait until they're done. Now, that doesn't mean you can't do crossover. doesn't mean you can't do lower extremity. So if it's just the one 
arm. I'm guessing it's his throwing arm. Go to the other side, get a little crossover effect, get a systemic effect by working the lower extremity. So you can still train them. I just wouldn't do it on that arm. And the reason is that um, the cuffs appear to drive myostatin down. Myostatin is part of the scarf family uh, with TGF beta. And so if you if you drive that ability for scar tissue to form, you got these large incision or wounds, larger than two inches is what I usually recommend. This might be a little aggressive on his side, but you know the surgeons probably don't want to uh, interfere with what's going on. So I would just listen to the surgeon, but don't let that hesitate from working the opposite side or working uh, lower extremity, which I find high value. And I'm gonna show you in a reason why I think so. Um, so hopefully that answered. James, did that answer your question? I gotta tell you, this is so cool having friends all over the world, really, just from doing this kind of stuff and being able to connect. I need to get back up to uh, the beautiful range of uh, Washington. I'm in it. Got to come up there and do a level two live, maybe a level two and a level one. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about what I was going to talk about today. I don't have a ton of time, um, but a cool new study came out that I thought people would be very, very interested in, especially um, those guys of us that are working with patients that are um, that are injured. So I'm going to change the window that I'm currently using. I'm going to use an application window. So you should be able to see this now. This is not my stuff. This is um, Chris Beardsley from Strength and Conditioning Research Review, which I've been a subscriber now for probably four years. I don't get anything to say this. I just really, really respect this guy. I don't know him. I think he's out of the UK, but he basically takes really relevant research and then he makes an infographic and he kind of talks about it. Um, and for 10 bucks a month, he summarizes a bunch of stuff in exercise physiology and strength and conditioning. It's amazing. I don't know how he has so much time to do this stuff. But anyway, so this recent one came out. This was based on a Hughes study, 2020. Patterson was part of this as well. And if you recognize Patterson, he's uh, been part of a lot of studies, especially um, mechanism of BFR. Um, but this study was really, really cool. So untrained subjects did four workouts. Each workout, four sets of one leg, one leg, leg presses. Um, some of them were concentrics or they were all concentric and eccentric. There was a bunch of different groups, BFR, light load, um, heavy load, moderate load, and what they really wanted to see. Now here's the take home. Okay. Is that exercise reduces pain and it really doesn't matter what type of exercise, just getting people moving. And so what drives me insane, and I know I'll get a lot of hate mail for this, um, is, is that if we're not doing active rehab um, exercises with patients and we're just relying on passive modalities, we're missing the boat because getting people active, increasing their capacity, not only helps them functionally, but also look at these reductions in pain levels, specifically with BFR. Now I have patients that tell me all the time, I don't understand how when we're done with our session, my pain levels are so much lower for six, seven, eight hours afterwards when we use BFR. Well, this helps us to explain it. Now in my, in my level one course, I haven't added this study yet to the level one course, but I will, because this is brand new stuff. Um, but I did add, I do have a, a slide in there talking about reduction in pain using all different types of exercise. So check this out, five minutes post, look at this elevation in um, pressure pain threshold as a percentage of baseline. Like, look at this, like this is all BFR and light load. Now this is light load, okay, with BFR. Here's moderate load. So even if you're just doing moderate load, moderate load is defined as 35 to 65% of somebody's one rep max. But the cuffs make a huge difference on pain and interpretation. And remember that's all getting interpreted in the brain. So there's something going on in the brain that is really reducing the pain and it just it really helps us to justify doing these early interventions even in the super acute phase of injury and getting cuffs on somebody so um 
I, I, I really like this study. I'm wondering if I can, I'm gonna drop this into the notes just because I think it's so cool. This is uh, Hughes, this is really Beardsley. You guys should check out check out Beard, Beardsley's stuff. He's on LinkedIn. I think I pulled this off of LinkedIn. He's on Instagram, uh, Chris Beardsley, SNC Research Review, uh, 2020. And I gotta drop this into my Dropbox. And then I'm gonna take it from my Dropbox and I'm gonna drag it. All right, I don't know why this has not been working as well for me lately, but. Hmm, I don't know what happened to it. Yeah, Lynn is saying, have an elderly patient who I started with the cuffs. Right now, we are just getting, increasing her tolerance for the pressure. Mm -hmm. I think that's reasonable. This research will be great to share with her. Yeah, I think it's really good. I think the ones that I see the biggest benefit are these hip and knee replacements. Pain levels are going, you know, way down. Uh, elbow tendinopathy, I see a nice, really nice benefit with that as well. So don't be hesitant to get in there, get them in there. Just remember to try to undercook before you overcook, you know, two week, two week, especially for folks that are not um, really used to exercise because even exercise alone is uncomfortable for people. So I'm sharing that little infographic with you guys. So you have it. Share now. Um, so it's under handouts. So instead of the chat or the polls, go to handouts. All right, I'm stopping sharing. What else you guys got for me? Anything else? I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, I'll pull the original research and I'll have that available next week and I'll put it into the, um, I'll put it into uh, where I, I replay these on my YouTube channel. Um, I don't have all however hundreds of ones that I've done but I have a bunch of them up there so I'll, I'll add the I'll add the full full research study so you can take a look at that um, anything else what else we got you know I just had a little Botox done and I mean it is a Botox is amazing how I mean there's nothing there it's so good our injector is really good too but I mean, like, not much, not much going on. No 11s. I mean, gosh, especially when you're on Zoom, is that we're getting tons of calls right now for aesthetics. And I think for this exact reason, people are seeing their face like right, get closed up. So smooth. I know, right? It's so good. I love it. Botox is incredible. All right. That's all I got. I got to get back to work. I uh, love you guys. Thank you so much for, um, for being here live. If you're catching this, on my YouTube channel, please subscribe, helps me out. I gotta get to it. I can't believe I don't have a thousand people. Yeah, but I'm working on it. All right, uh, be well, stay safe, and I will see you guys next week. Peace.